Hello, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I want to go into a spindle type dial indicator holder. Also called an intercol or a J clamp type dial indicator holder that clamps onto the spindle of your usually manual milling machine. So I'll do two videos, one on the actual unit itself and a couple of refinements to the design that I hope will add to the collective knowledge on these tools. And I'll do another video on making of this J-type clamp. If you've got a CNC machine and you'd want to make one of these, you can profile out this shape and I'll go into a method of holding a part which is to be profiled machined that you could call uh, standoff holding or packer holding. I've always wanted to make one of these spindle mounted dial test indicator holders. Um, they're available under the brand name Indicol in the past. I'm not sure if they still are. Um, also called a J frame type holder. They clamp very quickly and easily onto the spindle of the machine. And then you can adjust them and test your work, set up your work and so on with the dial indicator. And so you know what it's like these days, before you design something, you look at all the YouTube videos and s learn about all the different features and uh, try and find a way to improve it. Um, and uh, the Intercol type has circular, or at least one circular adjustable link, which means that you have to set it in both directions, which look like a bit of work. Um, so what I did with this one is use rectangular adjustable links and it can only be on the radial center line. So you can see there I've got a little pointer there and that is on center this way. So now whatever adjustment I make it stays on center. So it's quite fun trying to improve on the existing designs that are out there. Another thing I did was made it with adjustable friction joints so that you don't have to uh, fiddle around tightening and loosening the uh, adjustment screws. So now all, I can, all you need to do with this design is just tip it into position and uh, bring it into contact and there you are. Quick as that, you can check the concentricity or the lack of concentricity. For example there we can see the run out and you can adjust it until it is concentric. So this is a really useful little dial indicator. Probably there's lots of other videos from excellent videos from Joe Pye and Stefan Gotswinter that show the operation of these type of uh, spindle mounted dial indicators. Um, but this video I just wanted to show here uh, some of the uh, features of this slightly refined design. So now we can check the concentricity. For example, this is just a couple of ideas um, of the outside. Now you can see that that's concentric. So the big advantage of, or one of the big advantages of this type of holder is that once you've, you're part way through machining, your cutter may be in place and you want to check that something hasn't moved or distorted or your cutter hasn't shifted, then you could just clamp it on externally and test the feature of your part and um, particularly useful for a manual machine where you don't have automatic probing with a probe. And um, they're often designed so that you can loosen the little clamping screw and just pull them straight off. Uh, one of the videos says this is a really good feature. You can just clamp it straight on, slip it straight on, tighten it up and away you go. So a very universal uh, J-type or Indicol type um, dial indicator holder for on the spindle of your machine. Uh, hopefully I've added to the collective no knowledge with a couple of little refinements. That's adjustable uh, friction pivots so that you don't have to fiddle around 
uh, locking and unlocking, you know, which in itself was a problem because that generates movement of the dial indicator. And uh, what was the other feature? Oh yes, because they're rectangular, it only needs to be adjusted in the radial line. It doesn't have to be adjusted sideways. I'm sure a dial indicator holder like this will have multiple uses. For example, checking that your head is square. You can have a small amount of contact so you're not shocking your dial indicator so much. Set it on zero there. And a, a large sweeping diameter. I'm on zero again there, so I can get the head set extremely square. That's a 340 millimeter diameter sweep, and I'm within a hundredth of a millimeter. So that is ridiculously square at the moment. So there's another use for this type of dial indicator holder. You can use them for edge finding as well. Um, there's multiple uses for them. Really for a manual mill, for um, complicated setups, they are a really invaluable tool. I used to have a, a rather quick lash up that I used in the past and it's taken me decades to find the time to make a better designed dial indicator holder for the spindle. Well I'm not sure whether you viewers want just a general interest video on this uh, spindle indicator holder or whether you want to make one and you need more detailed design. Um, I'll just go over it briefly. I'm not sure what the demand will be for it. So you can see there it's really handy if you've got a cutter in place and you just quickly want to slip on the indicator and check your concentricity. You know it's very quick and easy to do that. You don't need to adjust the clamps because you've got uh, adjustable friction. So now you can check, well that's great, that's still concentric. Or you can, it might be the outside diameter you're interested in. So again you can just move it into position as easy as that. You don't need to fiddle around with adjusting the adjusting screws because they are preset. It's a preset friction type of design pivot. Um, that is stiff enough to hold the indicator, but allows you to make adjustments. This, this is, a, I think, quite an advantage for this type of holder. Um, so let's just go over some of the sizes. Okay, so we have two rectangular arms. Um, the top one is about 70 millimeters between centers and is of section 13 by 6, approximately, or quarter of an inch by half an inch. And the bottom rectangular arm is, what's that, about 60 millimeters between centers. Now this is all adjustable, so obviously those dimensions are not critical. Um, but something like that seems to give you a good range. You can get the indicator down below a cutter, and you can also adjust it right up high if you don't have a cutter in there and so on. And then there's just a little dovetail clamp to go on the end of your indicator um, with a pivot there. I'm using quarter inch or six millimeter uh, screws for the uh, main pivots and they're adjustable um, to a preset tension so that you've always got the same nice amount of friction. I've got six mil screws in the top two adjustments and a five mil screw in the bottom, but they could all be six millimeters, I suppose. We're just getting a bit carried away with science there. Okay, so that makes it really nice and easy to adjust. Um, there's not much else to it, just a little thumb screw there, a six millimeter screw there, uh, clamping it onto the spindle with a little acetyl uh, pad on it to soften the contact so you don't mar the spindle. I would make these arms out of steel because it's very tempting to make them out of aluminium, isn't it? Just easier to machine, more readily available for most um, small shops. But I'd make them out of steel because the threads that are within them will be just much more durable if they're steel threads. I was thinking about whether I could, I could make this and put it in the Hallmark website, but you know, there's a problem with low value products like this. The Chinese have really killed it for us manufacturers in the West. They would make something like this for 
20 or so dollars and with freight you might be able to buy it in the states for i don't know 30 or 40 dollars well we can't make it for that in the west especially with the cost of freight and raw materials it's not viable um, on the other hand if you made it for a fair price you'd only sell one or two a year so that's not viable either so all i can really do is um, offer you the design just for the fun of it. I just love making really good tools. I love refining the design and trying to improve the design for my own use and to share it with you guys. There may be some people that are really keen to build something like this. If you're interested in how to machine that J-shaped clamp plate on the top using a method that I would call standoffs or spaces to hold that clamp plate, have a look out for the adjoining video that will be soon to follow. Well, thanks for watching that video on the uh, dial indicator holder. I hope you found something useful there. Catch you next time. Cheers. Mm -hmm.